Good morning, church. Good morning, good morning. Grab your seat, everybody, out of the kitchen, out of the bathrooms. We are about to start. Welcome to everybody on live stream. I trust that God is going to speak to you this morning. I trust that He's going to speak to you and that He's going to reveal Himself to you this morning. And it is Resurrection Sunday. Woohoo! Wow, awesome, awesome. So let's get everybody into the sanctuary. The sanctuary, the church. Okay, I want you to stand up, greet the person on your left and on your right. Let's say to them, say to them, welcome to the oasis of love in the midst of a troubled world. Something good is going to happen to you today. Something good's going to happen to you today. If you haven't seen somebody you haven't greeted, go greet them now. Hello. Awesome, awesome. Can we please stand up, grab the person's hand on your left, on your, on your right, and let's just open up in prayer. This is such, such a special day today. Remember the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I've got a sweetie that's falling all over my mouth. Sorry. <laughs> so let's just, uh, let's just open up in prayer. Father, thank you for this morning, Lord Jesus. Thank you that we can come together as a church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you that we can remember this day where you were raised and you're seated at the right hand of the Father. The ultimate perfect sacrifice. And Father, as a church, as we're holding hands, Father, we just pray for the person on our left and on our right. We pray that you would touch them this morning. We pray that you would speak to them this morning, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, I pray even this morning that every person will have such a fresh revelation of the resurrected Christ, that we also have been raised with Christ. Father, thank you for your sweet presence this morning. Jesus, we worship you. Can we just for a few minutes pray in the Spirit? And I want you to just pray in the Spirit, interceding for the person on your left, on your right. Kabungo rush kabon yal bechde ha yastovechne ho shamango ho shabunia ho mnandi strumendre spreveldro shvorogorondo rovordia ramandria spregeriambo rovechningra blando rove. Pray for that person on your left, pray for that person on your right. Father, I pray that you would touch them. I pray whoever needs healing will receive healing this morning. I pray that every person that needs uh, hope to be restored will be restored this morning. You'll give hope to the hopeless. Lord, oh, healing to the broken heart right now. Father, we pray that you would break through for them, Father. Whatever is dead in their life today will be raised to new. Father, whatever vision needs to be restored will be restored today. Okay, so right now you can just let go and just let's lift our hands up and just let's, Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lift our hands up and just worship Him. Oh, Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, that you rose from the dead. Thank you, Father. We worship you. We honor you, Father. We want to thank you for this morning, Father. What a joyous occasion this morning. You rose from the dead. Thank you, my Father.
disappoint Sunday's empty too Since when has impossible ever stopped you? This is the sound of dry bones rattling This is the praise that you're dead now This is the 
That was nice. Thank you, Jesus. Have a seat. <laughs> Yo, that was a workout. <laughs> Have a seat. Hi, hi, hi. Resurrection power. Amen. Woohoo. You awake now? If you're not, there's something wrong with you. You, did, you need to come alive. Let's take the other mic. Come out of the grave. Oh, wow. Okay, so we're going to have Resurrection Church Sunday this morning. And I want to quickly just call a brother and course to the front. Pastor John is having such a great time. Yesterday, he says, last night, he says, it's going really good. I'm tired. It's a long day, but it's so good. God's moving and God's doing stuff. And so he sends his love, but I'm not jumping the gun on this. So, brother and course. Good morning, saints. How are you this Resurrection Sunday? Two things from, from Prophet John. He sent a message this morning, a voice message, and he said, I must tell you specifically that he loves you. Amen. And he says also that uh, I must tell you happy Easter. He's missing you a lot, but he's having a ball. He's really, he's really enjoying himself. The same message that he sent to Jade, he sent to me yesterday, and he said, because I'm tired. I'm really tired, but he's They've had a lovely time. I was watching all the services, almost, yeah, I mean, 90% of the services. And I watched a prophet preach yesterday. Yeah, he was on fire. As always, he, he really was on fire. But the second message is specifically for Mama Bev from uh, Apostle Ken and uh, uh, Prophetess Beulah. Mama Bev, uh, via Prophet John, I've been told to tell you that they love you so much. And they say, thank you very much. Thank you very much for releasing your husband to come and preach in Bulawayo in their 40th anniversary. Yeah, the emphasis is they love you very much. And they really appreciate it. And also, Apostle Ken said, I must tell the church that they appreciate ACF a lot. They love you guys. Thank you very much. Pastor Jay. And Sherry. <laughs> Grandma Shireen. <laughs> Grandma Reen is going to be my grandmother name one day. <laughs> but in 15, 20 years time, all right? Yes. Kids, right? Yes. Okay, just checking. Morning, everybody. You're so welcome this morning. It's such a good day to celebrate Jesus. Amen. Amen. For the resurrection, for his power, his resurrection power. It's a celebration because we have freedom and we have the victory when Christ died on the cross for us. Amen. But I'm actually here to tell you about the announcements, not to preach. So um, let's take these three blocks. Have we got any first time visitors visiting Hella Girls? Nice to see you. Any first time visitors? Any real friends and family? Nice to see you. You look so beautiful. Um, anybody in these two blocks? First time visitors? Welcome, welcome. Thank you for coming this morning. It's so good to see you. We are generally weird, so just love us, all right? Just love us. You're so welcome. And anybody here? Hey, guys. Oh, yeah, the first time in a long time. Yeah, yeah, I know your type. Welcome, guys. Everybody else? We're all friends and family. Well, let's give our visitor and our friends and family a good, warm welcome. So we got... I assume youth this Friday at 6.30. <laughs> I see a bathroom on the right. <laughs> Andre and I do love each other, by the way. We just tease each other. So, yes, the men's toilets are on that side to my left, which is your right. I had an argument with my daughter yesterday. I was trying to tell her, so you go down this road and then you turn left. She says, Mommy, turn right. I said, you turn left. And I'm showing to the right. And then I realize, oh, yeah, I right with his hand. So you turn right. <laughs> I still get confused to this day. But anyway, and I believe prayer meeting is back on Saturday. <laughs> and Andre and Andrew and the rest of everybody said, yes, amen. It's resurrection power. <laughs> Young adults, it's finally to have your meeting this coming Sunday. Can you believe it? We're going into April now. So... This coming Sunday at 5 p.m. here at the church. So all those who think you're young and are genuinely young, please come along. Okay, don't be deceived, <laughs> Andre. And then 
On Sunday, the 21st of April, we're going to have a baptism service, so we're very excited about that. So please scan the QR code and then give us your, uh, just your details so we know who wants to be baptized and then we can also have the information for your baptism certificate. So keep a lookout for that day. And then just a little heads up for Saturday, the 11th of May, we'll be having a ladies meeting. Um, I'm not too sure, we haven't decided on a time yet, have we Bev? Nine o'clock, is it nine o'clock? Okay, I guess we're doing it nine o'clock then. So the 11th of May, we will give you more information. It's the Saturday before Mother's Day, so it's going to be very special. So ladies, please do come along. Give us your names as well. We'll get a QR code for you next week. Have it all ready if you can just scan and give us your names. And we're going to have an awesome, awesome woman of God preaching that morning. Not me, but it'll be Bev this time. <laughs> I love it when Bev Bev preaches because she just gets straight to the heart issues and it's like what we need to hear. It's almost like a Joyce Meyer for me, you know, Joyce Meyer when she she preaches. So we are looking forward to that very much so. Then unfortunately there's no lunch today, so you've got to go home and eat lunch. Men, you've got to go home and cook for your wives, all right? Have a braai or something with your family. It's a family day. So but we will be back on schedule next week Sunday. Then at the end of the service... The church has a little surprise for you. You're all going to get an Easter egg. But I'm dishing them out this time because on Friday, I had 110 crosses printed and made for us and about half the congregation never got. So my question is, where are all my crosses? So those who took two or three hopefully will need them. So if you would like another one, Please come and speak to me. I will get more printed if you really want one. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a family member who does it. So just come and speak to me after the service and I'll get some more made for. Because I know a lot of people said they didn't get. So, and obviously I want to bless you. Look at Andre. I know. That's why you were a little upset this morning, right? You look sad. <laughs> So please, I'd love to bless you. So as you leave, um, I'll have someone maybe only at the back. If you want an Easter egg, you have to come to me at the back. All right. I'm not going to be standing in the coffee shop. So come to me and we just want to bless you for this morning. And that's about it. Pastor Andre, I guess it's you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, Shireen. That was well done. Yeah, so I have about seven verses or eight verses to go through for the offering, but I'm, I'm not going to read all of them. I'm just going to refer to them. So the first one that I want to refer to is Proverbs 3 verse 5, where it says, Trust in the Lord with thy heart and lean not on your own understanding. So that Hebrew, the Hebrew word for lean is sha'an, and it is exactly the same word that is used when it talks about Samson after they had poked out his eyes and he was now in this... Um, arena, and he asked the boy to take him to the pillars so that he can lean on them. So we get the idea that when the Bible says, lean not, uh, trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understanding, it means do not put weight, do not trust, do not put lean forward on your own understanding. Now, Jesus, at one point he told his disciples to get into the boat and row across to the other side. Now, the, between Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they, they report two, two different names where they went to. So they, one is that they went to Gadara. The other one is Gesine. So, But those two towns are close to each other, so it's the region, and that's where he met up with the men who, were, who had a, a thousand or so demons in them. So now, on the way there... Jesus falls asleep in the boat. And a wind comes up and there's a storm. And during the storm, the disciples now got scared that they cannot, this, this boat is now filling up with water or they can't fight against the wind. So they wake him up. Now, according to Matthew and according to Mark, um, so Matthew says that Jesus says to them, and let me just get the right wording, he says to them, Why are you fearful? You of little faith. So that's the way Mark, Matthew sees it. Jesus says, why are you fearful? So we have fear on the one end. And then he says, you have little faith. Now, when he talks about that little faith, and this is in, in Matthew 8. So in Matthew 14, we have another story in a boat. And this time, Peter, in the middle of the, of the lake, gets out and walks toward 
Jesus. Now, I don't know who of you have walked on water recently, <laughs> but I think it's just my, my perception that if I had to walk on water, little faith wouldn't do it for me. Yeah. You know, I, I just, it's the way that I would think. You know, that's my natural way of thinking. Yet, when Jesus grabbed him by his hand, he said to him, why do you have little faith? And, and so to me, that seems like, well, you know, this is not the way that we measure, you know, so it's perhaps not the quantity of faith. Because Jesus says, if you have faith like a mustard seed, you, you know, so it's not the quantity. It is what did Peter lean on? So Luke, our beloved Luke, so, uh, you know, um, the Apostle Paul refers to him in the letter of the Corinthians. He says, our beloved physician, and we have a beloved physician, a healer here. So I, I'm not sure where he got the title from. but So Luke writes, and, and from his perception of what Jesus said, because Matthew said, why do you fear? You have little faith. Mark says that Jesus says, why do you fear? You have no faith. It's not the same thing. But that's the way that Mark saw it. But Luke sees something different. And he doesn't see the, the, the fact that Jesus perhaps would have said that they had no faith. Luke says, in Luke, 5 verse, no, Luke 8 verse 25, he said to them, where is your faith? So he's not addressing the quantity of faith. He's asking, where is your faith? So impossible things can be done depending on where our faith is. It's not the quantity of our faith. So I want to encourage you with a little story, a personal story. A few years ago, feels like a few years ago, but it's probably, I don't know, 14, 15 years ago, my wife and I were accidentally bought a house. If I say accidentally, <laughs> she was curious to see what happens at an auction. I was not. She nagged me. No, she didn't nag me. She persisted that we go and look at this auction. So at the auction, we ended up buying the house, which we couldn't afford. I went into a state of fear. I lost my appetite because I knew that I was now in for money that I didn't have. We didn't have that. Her job, they cut her salary by 50% two months prior to that. So we didn't have the funds. We had just bought another house which we were renovating, and all our money was tied up in that house. So out of curiosity, we bought another house just to see what can happen. So that evening, I, you know when you have this upset stomach the whole time and you have this butterfly, and, and you, we know that is fear. We know that is, that's exactly, I was trapped in fear. And I didn't know how we are gonna pay for this because if we failed to pay, we had to still pay 10% and the, the, um, the, the fee for the um, auctioneer. So we, we were in to lose quite a lot of money if we couldn't get a bond. So that night, I did the wisest thing possible, I prayed. And I said, God, I don't know why I said yes when the bid was ready to be awarded, but I think you had something to do with it. Now, because I think that, I now believe that. So I said, God, so now I'm making you responsible to pay for this. And all of a sudden, peace came over me. And then a great boldness came over me. So the next day, I contacted a bond originator. And I said to him, send me the forms. Let me fill them in, which I did very scantily. I didn't fill in all the details because I didn't want to clearly indicate we can't afford it. So, and then I said to him, submit this. He called me back and said to me, your form is not complete enough. And I said to him, submit it as it is. And he said, okay, I'll submit it to all four banks and we'll see. And I said to him, no. And this is when I took the step of boldness. I said, submit it to APSA and APSA only. And he said to me, you're going to lose your money. I said to him, no, I won't. He called me by that afternoon. He said to me, I've been a bond originator for more than 20 years. He says, what happened today has never happened before. He said, I submitted your form at quarter to 11. At half past 11, it was proved 100% bond. He said, you, you probably know somebody I high up in APSA. And I said to him, it's slightly higher than APSA. <laughs> so it, it, 
it, to me, that was, when I put my faith in the finances that we had, fear caught me. After praying, boldness stepped up and I said, this is God's doing. It is now His responsibility. Two years later, the house was fully paid. So, just take courage. Be encouraged that in this kingdom that we have stepped into, everything has seed potential. Everything is possible. Dry bones can rise up because we have a Savior who stood up out of the death and new birth is a possibility. In fact, new birth is a method that happens in this new kingdom. Everything can be born again. Everything has potential. So with that, take encouragement. Bring your offering and whatever your situation is, speak unto it, but don't fear. And, and this is the last thing. When Jairus' daughter was sick, Jesus was on his way there. And a woman who had the issue of blood touched his, the hem of his garment. And he then wanted to know what had happened. And then she was, she was scared to, to, to acknowledge that, it was, that she touched his, the hem of his garment. And the scripture says, eventually she owned up and said, it was me. And then the scripture says something very interesting. She told him the whole truth. And according to my dad, the whole truth starts three days before creation. That's where her story started. And then by then, Jairus' daughter had died. Because the lady took quite a long time to tell him the whole truth. And when somebody told Jairus that your daughter had died, Jesus heard that. And his response to Jairus is, do not fear, only believe. Do not fear, only believe. Even though it is too late, do not fear, only believe. So with that, there's two boxes in front, two boxes in the rear. There's a card swipe machine in the kitchen area. There's a QR code. Bring your issue to God. Bring your issue, whatever it is. Bring it to God. Thank you. Would you stretch out your hands symbolically to the front boxes? Let us pray over your offering. Father, we thank you that your word teaches us that we can rely on you and that we can trust you. And we can trust you because your word is the truth and you are a good, good God. And, and Lord, we bring every issue, every faith issue that we have had to, to turn to you for and not rely on our own strength and not rely on our own ability but we have now placed these issues in your hand. And Father, we thank you that we will see 
new life coming to that issue. We will see it reach its potential in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now, hey, we're going to be blessed. Thank you. I have to now compose myself because I've got so much joy in my heart this morning. I just want to jump out of my skin. So I just got to like compose quickly because it's a serious song. But anyway, um, when I was asked to do a song, it, this was immediately no brainer, popped into my head. Um, it means so much to me um, when I heard it the first time. And um, it, got, it talks to me about. Things are so busy in our lives. We're running around this way and that way and distractions and everything's happening at the same time and pressure, 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 uh, running to church, running home, doing this, going this way and you're losing focus. And if we just take time to still our minds, still our heart and know that Calvary is enough to take everything away every doubt, every worry, every anxiousness or feelings that we have and time will not slip away from us because I'm actually feeling of time slipping away but it's actually not. It's just the important, the not, the stuff that's not important, that is slipping away but the important things is for us to take in and remember Calvary is enough. Take that moment. Listen Listen to your heart. Listen to God, what He wants to tell you. And know that Calvary is enough for everything. <coughs> I resolve to know Nothing but you crucified Somehow in this room right now, it is enough. The weight of the world, too much for the souls of men. But somehow you hold it all up on the cross. Calvary.
was beautiful, eh? Um, when we were worshipping and we sang that song, Rattle, and the dry bones, hear the word of the Lord, I slept almost a sore, sore, a sore, no, I'm trying to unlock this thing. I saw um, people here, even today, and probably you're watching on live stream, where you've lost, you've lost your vision. You've not, well, you could have lost your physical vision, but I'm talking about l losing um, your vision for life, losing your destiny. Um, you had dreams, you, you had great dreams, and somebody said something, and suddenly it just totally put you off track. And it, it feels almost like it's too long ago. What can change even today? But God can change it. If you've lost any vision, if you've lost anything uh, of a dream or something, you know, God can resurrect it. He resurrected Jesus. He can resurrect that. And I really believe that, um, that God is going to just re-vision refocus, restore, re-resurrect your dreams and your visions. Yeah. Does it mean something to anybody? Like we all, we all been there. We all somehow have been there where, oh, I'm going for God, da, 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 da. next moment one person says something, oh, you can't do it. And it's amazing we always believe that word <laughs> quicker than what God has said. You know, we get visions and dreams and prophetic words and 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 and. It's like, I'm going for God. And then one person don't understand it and they criticize it. And then it just puts you off track. But I believe that God is just going to restore boldness and God is going to restore you getting back on track, getting back on track where God wants you to be. Amen. 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 <sighs> So today is Resurrection Sunday, and I decided to put that picture on the center screen. What a, what a beautiful day this is. And today is a day where we remember that He rose from the dead, that He is alive even today. Um, I wrote this thing, uh, this, let me read it. You can't have the cross and not the resurrection. You can't have the resurrection without the cross. You can't have the cross and not the resurrection. And you can't have the resurrection without the cross. You can't have the one and not the other. Jesus died and he rose. He rose because he died. And a lot of times, and I, um, um, I, I, love the res I love the crucifixion. I love the fact that, that Jesus the ultimate sacrifice. Um, secret, maybe it will, maybe I must not say. I, I love that scripture. I resolve to know nothing except Christ Jesus and Him crucified. And there's so many scriptures about, but it's the sacrifice and focusing on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And I feel like sometimes we tend to forget about the resurrection. We tend to sometimes forget the power of the resurrection. I think that's why God said, you know, and I think he brought the parallel in between your baptism and the resurrection. Or Jesus' resurrection and the baptism. That you've been raised into newness in life. That's why it's important to get baptized. If you've not been baptized, scan in and get baptized. Because it's a, it is a literal dying to the old, stepping into the new. That you've died to the old nature. The old life, stepping into your destiny, the calling that he's got for you. And sometimes I feel like we give so much, uh, we give less attention to the resurrection. And as Christians, and part of our Christian faith, and part of Christianity, the resurrection is a vital part of it. Amen. It's a vital, vital part of us as Christians, that he is alive. If he was not raised on the dead, it would be another religion. Yeah. 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 I saw this pictures, sorry, but it's like these floods happening in certain parts of the country. And here's this guy carrying a god. I'm like, oh, Jesus. 
Because they did. <laughs> he is the one carrying a Hare Krishna. If it wasn't for his resurrection, it would, would have been another dead religion. Another dead religion. But he is alive. And that is a lot of times what offends the heart of people. They can accept. A lot of they accept. Um, Islam, all of those, they accept. He died. You know, some have got different. Majority of them accept. The, the, the death of the cross. They accept that. But as soon as you touch the resurrection, mm, that, that, that's just too much. That, that, that offends me a little bit too much. You can't say that. But he is alive. He is raised. He's seated at the right hand of the Father, now interceding for you and for me. I'm talking so much away from this then. I want to read this um, theologian. He wrote this the um, quote, and I thought it's so beautiful. The church is not created. The church did not create the resurrection story. Instead, the resurrection story created the church. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I read it again, just because I can, and I've got the mic. <laughs> the church did not create the resurrection story. Instead. The resurrection story created the church. Let that sea lie moment. Let that sink in. And today we're going to remember the resurrection. And we're going to do something right at the end. And if I, I can't not do something that's a bit out of your comfort zone because it pushes me out of my comfort zone. Okay? So you're just all going to do it with me. Okay? Is that fine? Okay. If you're on live stream, you're going to do it. Just type it in the comment or something. But with this in mind, there's so much symbolism and pictures right through the Old Testament speaking about the resurrection. If you read, it's, it's amazing. We were talking a little under, and I was talking on Friday a little bit about jo uh, Joseph. You can read the resurrection story. Elijah, we read it today, the resurrection story. Jonah, the resurrection story. You can see so much of the resurrection story. You can read into it and symbolism of Christ risen, the resurrection, the resurrection from the dead. Now, I want to bring another angle to this today, which um, I'm really praying. I was reading through the states last night. I'm like, oh, Jesus, I hope this is going to come across, but I'm trusting that it would. Now, here comes the Israelites. They're in Egypt. They, um, Moses confronted um, Pharaoh and says, let my people go. So here's the Exodus. They go through the Red Sea. And we were at the sea last week. And I stood there and I thought to myself, how amazing is this? All these waves. And here comes. And he, he parts. How amazing that is. I'm looking at these powerful, you don't mess with that. <laughs> and here comes God. It's like makes a road right in the middle of this. Well, right in the sea, uh, and they're crossing over. It just, it just got me a little bit mind-blowing there. But anyway, so they go through the Red Sea, and here they're on the way to the Promised Land. And they get to this mountain, Mount Sinai. And um, God encounter, um, speaks to Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Moses speaks to God, and God wanted to dwell with his people. That was his desire. He wanted to be God to his nation. And he wanted this nation to be special, not special, special, <laughs> special, that they were reflecting his values, reflecting his nature. And he, he, he wanted to dwell with them. But now you must remember, this is a God that is sinless, He's for justice. He's for righteousness. He's a merciful God. He's a gracious God. And he, is, he wants to dwell there, but they had to do some things in order for them to have relationship with him. So I want to focus. There's a lot happened. Leviticus, you can read about it. But one part is the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant that God said... I want to dwell with you. This is what you're going to do. You're going to make this box. So let's put it on the screen. Go put it on the screen quickly, the ark. You're going to make the, the ark of the covenant. You're going to make a box. 
You're going to put cherubims over it. The mercy seat will be there. In Exodus 25, you could just leave that on. I'll read here. Exodus 25, verse 8 to 9. Then have them make a sanctuary for me, and I will dwell among them. Make this tabernacle and all its uh, finishings exactly like the pattern I have shown you. Exodus 25, 22. There I will meet with you, and from among the mercy seed, from between the two cherubims that are on the ark of the testament, I will speak with you about all that I have given, uh, give you in com- uh, commandment for the people of Israel. So they made this ark, and they had to carry this ark. This ark was very special for the Israelite nation. And even today, they're trying to find it. They will never find it. They will never. You can look for it. You will not find that. It's been destroyed. Now, I want to tell a story what happened to me once. Um, and I really hope, I feel like I have to tell this here. But Prophet Kurbis, when I was there, they made this ark as a, a replica. I don't know if you remember the, the ark that he made. And one night, one, my friend and I were like, we, we want to be like Samuel. You know what Samuel did? He crept under the veil and slept by the ark. So <laughs> we thought, we're hungry for Jesus. We, we're hungry for his presence. And we want to... We wanna, act this out. So I took my sleeping bag, we were in the church, <laughs> and we slept by the ark that night, and I thought I'm going to have this glory encounter. <laughs> oh, nothing, nothing. <laughs> Black or all. What I did feel, what I did feel, extreme condemnation the next day. And I was like, Jesus, why am I feeling this? We're interacting, we Acting a prophetic action here, yes. sleeping by the ark, like Samuel, by the ark, wanting your, your presence. And suddenly I'm feeling so condemned, and I don't know what I did wrong. I felt so guilty and shame and everything that you can, you felt, I uh, felt that right there. And I was like, why am I feeling this? This doesn't make sense to me at all. And Prophet Kirbis was sharing the morning devotion, and I'm standing there. And next moment, Prophet Kirbis calls all the Year for Christ students to the front and says, you're going to now pray for all the, the kids in the school. I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm feeling so condemned and guilty. I don't know what I did wrong, but I did something wrong. Ah, it was horrible. Uh, but the Prophet spoke. I have to, yes, sir, obey. I'm obedient. And... Um, Next person I get to, the power of God hit him. I'm like, what? It's not about my feelings, I guess. Next time, I mean, the power of God just started hitting people, every person I got to. And I was like, okay, maybe there's something in this entire thing. I did not understand it at all. So, Prophet Kubis that that's teaching about, you shall not remember that at all anymore. Because that's not the place where he'll meet you anymore. So I don't want to run ahead of myself. But just a bit of history. The Ark of a Covenant, the sacred, was sacred in the Old Testament. It contained the Ten Commandments and the, um, te- the law and everything. It is a sacred object to the Israel nation, center of their um, religious rituals and ceremonies. It's constructed by God at the Mount Sinai at specific wood. It also symbolized God's presence among the Israelites and served as a focal point um, for their worship. It was carried by priests where the Israelites journeyed through um, different places. Uh, and then later on, it was placed in the tabernacle, the Holy of Holies in Jerusalem. The ark plays a significant role in the key events of Israel's history, including the crossing of Jordan River and the fall of Jericho. So there's the ark that God said to them, you're going to make this ark. So what has this got to do with the resurrection? You'll have to wait and see. Beautiful. So let's park this here. Remember the ark? Remember the covenant? Now, just a bit of, I think, let me put this, I didn't. So what the, before I get to the uh, resurrection story, the priest used to, of course, get an animal, do a sacrifice 
of this animal, and they would go in and sprinkle the blood on the mercy seat. And then their sins will be forgiven for entire year. And that is where Moses also met God, and God would speak to him about specific things. So the priest also did certain things after they sprinkled the blood, that the sacrifice sprinkled the blood, and the priest did something else as well, which I'll get to now. I'm keeping you curious. Are you curious? Yes. <laughs> okay, so I want us to read the resurrection story, and I'm trusting that you'll kind of put the connection together. John 20. Let's go to John 20 there. You can put that on the screen for me. And we're going to read to a specific part. John 20. Johannes 20. 20 verse 1. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. There's been said that first day of the week was the Sunday. Verse 2, just carry on, I'll tell, I'll tell you when to stop. Verse 2. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, which was John, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Verse 3. So Peter and the other disciples started, uh, start, started with the tomb. Now he says it weird. King James I. Carry on. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Peter did not go in. Then uh, John did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there. Now, it was unlawful for you to just go into a tomb. You will be unclean. Here's this man of faith. I don't care. I've already denied him three times. I've repented. I'm running right into the tomb. I want to see right there. I'm walking on the water. I've got Little faith, big faith, what he's going in, he wants to see. And at the end, it says, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head, the cloth was still laying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, I think John eventually, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Yeah, they've been three years, three and a half years with him. And he said, I'm going to die. And after that, I'm going to And they still didn't get it. Yeah, they didn't put the dots together. I wonder how many of us would have. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. But Mary, Mary stayed behind. Mary, a woman, stayed behind, which in that time was, they were treated very badly. They were lower, I think they were lower than dogs. They weren't treated well. But Mary stood outside the tomb, crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. Verse 12. And saw two angels in white, seated where the Jesus' body had been. One on the head, and the other at the foot. Verse 14. Carry on, please. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not recognize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you, are if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will um, get him. Now, in those days, it was common for grave people to steal bodies. 
And I think that's what was going through their minds. It's like, oh, they've stolen his body now. And I think he was such a prominent figure in that time where people, you know, they wanted to be around him. And it probably could be very right that that's what was going through their minds. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Now, Rabboni was the highest form of teacher. You had Rabbi, Rabbi, and then Rabboni was the highest form of teacher in that time. Jesus says, do not hold on me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with this news. And women in those times, their, their word was not much believed to be true, just, and here she is declaring, he is risen. I think Jesus came and broke that entire social thing completely, smashed it. Well, he did a lot. I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. Now, you could just stop it there. On the evening of the first day, you could read the entire chapter. It's just so beautiful. So, I want you to jump back to verse 12. Now, Mary stood outside the tomb crying, and she wept. She bent over and looked into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where the Lord's body had been, one on the head and the other at the foot. I believe this is such a perfect, beautiful example of the Ark of the Covenant. Put that Ark on again. One at his foot. Imagine that Jesus there, one at his foot and one at his head. I think that's a beautiful example of the Ark of the Covenant. I think it offended the Jewish leaders of those days because they had the temple built. It was all there. And here in a tomb, in a tomb, that was the new most holy place, the mercy seat, right in there. Jesus on the mercy seat shed his blood as the ultimate, perfect, final sacrifice. Now let me move back a little bit. The priest would go in, Jesus, and I was meditating on this. Mary saw it, but Jesus was outside the tomb. She saw the angels, but Jesus, the high priest, outside the tomb, going to present to the Father. Now, the high priest used to go in, sprinkle the blood. There they all meet. You know the other thing they used to do? <laughs> they used to take portions of the meat and burn it as a burnt sacrifice. And some of them, portions they would eat. They would eat and enjoy it. Leviticus, let's put it here, Leviticus 6 verse 26 to 27. The priest who offered it shall eat it. It is to be eaten in the sacred area, sanctuary area, in the courtyard of the tent of meeting. Whatever touches, in, uh, whatever touches any of the flesh will be holy, and any of the blood is spattered on the garment, you will wash it in the sanctuary area. I see that very much communion. And we're going to take communion today. And I want you to, when you take it, he's risen. He's risen. So they would sprinkle the blood, offer the sacrifice, sprinkle the blood, and they will take the leftovers and they would eat it. The communion, the body of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. I've been sanctified. I've been set apart. His blood was shed for me. His body was broken for me. He's risen. So why is his resurrection important? Now, I've got a couple of minutes. 
the early church in the book of Acts emphasized Christ's uh, resurrection actually more than his death. When they would speak about his death, it would be always in the context of his resurrection. Do you know most of the book of Acts, they would speak more about his resurrection than his death? So let's read this couple of scriptures. And what's amazing is that his resurrection proves that he's alive and not dead. Acts 2 verse 24. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. Acts 2 verse 32. This is the early church. Verse 32. God had raised this Jesus to life and we are all his witnesses of it. Verse 15, 3 verse 15, you killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. You are witnesses of this. Acts 4, 33, with great power, the gospel continue. They were testifying to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God raised, and God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all. Now, why the resurrection? The resurrection, um, Jesus' physical resurrection is the foundation of the doctrine of Christianity. That's your foundation. Yeah. Let me read this quote. A Christian is someone who believes in the physical resurrection of Jesus Christ and lives in light of the implications of that event. Romans 10 verse 9 says, if you, now, often when we do salvation calls, we say, I'm a sinner, blah, 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 you know, we will have this salvation prayer, call people to salvation. But the resurrection is right in the middle of this. Acts 10 verse 9 says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe with your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's not a dead religion. You will be saved if you believe that he was risen from the dead. Amazing that the resurrection confirmed his identity, proving that Jesus was the Son of God and the promised Messiah. Romans 1 verse 4, And who through the Spirit of holiness and appointed the Son of God in power by His resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. It's amazing His resurrection also purchased your justification. Listen to this. This is beautiful. This is so nice. I'm enjoying this. He who believed who, he who delivered over to death for our sin, Jesus was delivered for over for our sin, but was, but was raised to life for our justification. His resurrection is powerful. Listen to this quote. Jesus was our obedience substitute during this life, during his life. Our punishment substitute in his death and our rebirth substitute in his resurrection. His resurrection enables us to live and walk in the promises that he's got for us through the Holy Spirit. Romans 8 verse 11 says, And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, Living in you, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the living in you, who was who he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. You cannot have the cross and not have the resurrection, you can't have the resurrection and not have the cross. So what we're going to do today is I want us to take communion again with this in mind, that he is raised, that he's seated, that he said it is finished. When he said it's finished, the dwelling place of God came and dwelled within man, within you, you and me. That's where the dwelling place is, not a physical place. Now, before Jesus went to the cross, he, um, he broke the bread. 
We did it on Friday, remembering the crucifixion. Broke the bed, bread. Took the communion. Remembered the ultimate sacrifice. But you know Jesus did it later on again after his resurrection? After his resurrection, he broke the bread again. And he ate it. And that is what we're going to do today. And then we're still going to do that other thing I've not forgotten. I'm sure some of you are like praying, please, Jesus, you know, forget about it. <laughs> I've been meditating, but I'm not going to forget about it. <laughs> Luke 24, verse 13 to 16, and then 28 to 31. Now, that same day, two of them were going. Now, this is after the resurrection. Mary saw, and I'm not reading in between there, but it's, they explain about the resurrection, they couldn't find his body, etc. Two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened, and they talked and discussed these things with each other. Jesus himself came, not a symbol, Jesus himself. That's why he had literally the nails. He literally had the hand nails they could see him thomas doubting thomas put his finger in his side he literally was jesus literally his feet was pierced and he was raised like that not totally it disappeared whole it's a remembrance the ultimate finished sacrifice uh, Jesus himself came up and walked along them, but they were kept from recognizing him. I wonder why, just out of curiosity. And they uh, approached the village to which they were going. Jesus continued as if he were going further, but they argued him strongly. Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were open, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. And I believe that's where the kingdom was established. So we're going to take communion again today. But I want us to do it differently. The other thing is still we're going to do. But I want you to take the communion and just realize that he's risen. And I've been raised with him into this newness of life. I'm seated with him in heavenly places, far above princes, far above principalities. I'm seated with him. I've been raised with him. So what we're going to do is I want you to take communion. Do not eat it yet. And we're going to play a song. So, and then we're going to eat the body, the blood of Jesus, remembering his resurrection together. And then Tammy's going to do an item for us. So Andrew's going to play a nice song. So I want you to, there's two tables at the back and two tables in front. And then I want you to come to the front and take communion now. Thank you, Uncle Andrew. I love you. Good mm-hmm. 
Beautiful. So I want to read this scripture, and when I finished reading it, I want you then to take the body, the blood of Jesus, and I want you to eat it. And then Tammy is going to do a song for us, and I want you just to let the song um, minister to you while she does it. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3 to 4. For what I have received, I pass on to you as of the first importance, that Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried and that he raised, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. So Father, thank you. As a body, as a church together, we take the blood and the body of Jesus and we remember for the, remember the resurrection. Jesus, that you have sprinkled your blood in the heavenlies, that you're seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for rising for being resurrected from the dead. It's the ultimate sacrifice. So right now, let's take the body and eat it together.
Beautiful. So I want the band on the stage quickly. And we're going to do something, and you're all going to do it. So I want everybody to stand up. And I want you to put that uh, image back on, this, on the screen, Christ is risen. And we're going to shout it out. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Are you cool with that? Okay, we're going to shout it out loud. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. And the end of that, we're just going to give a shout of praise. Okay, so I want that image back up. I said, Belief, I do need help. I can help from you. I love technology. Let's go for it. There we go. I got it. I got it. I, I went there before you. <laughs> okay, so I want you, to, I'm going to shout one. Two, three, and I want you to not Christ is risen like a puny, mousy puny. Let's 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 get a bit out of your comfort zone. Oh my word, yeah, get a bit out of your comfort zone. Say Christ is risen, Christ is risen, Christ is risen, and we're gonna just do a shout of praise at the end of that. The band is gonna help you. They're gonna clink 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 and clap the drummer or bass clink clink something. Okay, but are you cool with that? Let's. He is alive he is alive imagine that you were three years with him and suddenly you discover he's alive you would i think you'll definitely jump out of your comfort zone you probably make twilly willy whatever running around the church or tumbling things or something that he is risen okay so i'm gonna go one two three and you're gonna shout three times christ is risen okay one Two, one, two, three. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Yeah. Woo! You are alive, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Yeah. It's so good. Enjoy the rest of your Resurrection Sunday. Bless you. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. Play something. Bless you. See you next week Sunday. Jane, thank you. Yay!